Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to give all glory, honor, and praise to you, God the Father, to you, God the Son, to you, God the Holy Spirit. Our lives are not our own. To you, we belong. We want to give ourselves away to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Look at somebody and say, how to present yourself as a living sacrifice. And then say life lessons on sacrifice from a not so rich young ruler. And as Jesus was getting ready to go on a journey, a man came up to him and knelt before him and asked, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life. But Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. 19, he says, you know the commandments. Do not murder. Let me ask this question. I know you didn't kill nobody with a gun. The second most deadliest instrument of destruction is the gun. The first is the human tongue. Did anybody do a better job not slandering and killing folks with your tongue this week? Talking about people. Do not commit adultery. We talked about body count last week. Praise God. Hope, hopefully nobody's body count went up since we talked about this. Uh, uh, do not steal. Praise God. Uh, most folks don't realize with the talents that God has given them, uh, uh, they are stealing from themselves when they don't utilize what they have. The man had, uh, uh, was hand painting a, a $20 bill, and then in the same room he had paintings that sold for thousands of dollars. So when they asked him, who had you stole from the most, he said, myself. And we got some people, praise God, if the key to success is found in the work pants, they want to pick the lock. They'd rather make you, wait till you do something or wait till you buy some and steal it from you. Do not give false testimony. We know Satan is the father of lies, praise God. The biggest liars mix truth with lies. Do not murder. Again, praise God, do not commit adultery. Do not defraud on your mother and father. And he said to him, teacher, all these I've done since my youth. Now, when I read the word of God, it tells me not y'all, but all of us have what? Sin didn't come short of the glory of God, but he was pretty confident that he'd obeyed all the commandments since he was youth. And, and looking at him, Jesus showed love and said to him, wow, one thing you, you lack. And King James would say, if you want to be perfect now, why don't you sell all of that stuff, give it to the poor, and come follow me and you'll have treasures in heaven. But the word of God reminds us that he went away sad because he had many possessions, but we know from the revelation he didn't have possessions, possessions had him. He didn't have money, money had him. And Jesus could have busted him right there saying, man, you can't even get past the first commandment to put no other God before me. You're thinking that you're there, but you're not really there yet, praise God. How many of us know the biggest room in all of our world is the room for improvement? Amen. Amen. He was trying to get this man to store up his treasures in heaven, but he went away sad. And Jesus said to his disciples how hard it will be for those who are rich or wealthy to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples were amazed at his words. Jesus responded and said, children, how hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom. And then they said, even more astonished unto him, well, who can be saved? Jesus said, with people it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Peter went on to say, behold, Jesus, we have left everything and have followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say unto you, no one who has left house, brothers, sisters, mother, or father, or children, or forms for my sake and the gospel's sake, but he will receive, somebody say, a hundred times as much in the present time. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and forms, along with persecution in this age. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. God wants to teach today on how you 
can present your body as a living sacrifice as we learn from this not so rich young ruler. We sung this beautiful song, y'all, I give myself away. My life is not my own, to you I belong. And that's exactly where hard God's heart is today regarding all of us as children. Somebody say with me, Jesus died for me. My Heavenly Father gave his life for me to set me free so God the Holy Spirit can live his new life more abundantly in me with total victory. And our cornerstone scripture remind us in John 10.10 10, that this thief, this, this enemy, uh, 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 Satan, you take the D off a of devil and what do you have? Evil. He's not a good devil. He comes to do only three things, to steal God's will, to steal our zeal and destroy our joy. He don't want you to live the life that Jesus died for you to have. He wants you to live your life in the world and of the world. And God told us on last week that, 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 that we're not to be conformed to this world. But we've got to be transformed, again, somebody say supernaturally changed, supernaturally by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. And God said, don't just look at one area, praise God, what you think, what you say, what you do, what you eat, and what you, you inherit. And we went through all of those. God taught us what we think about, we bring about. We focus upon what we do when we focus upon the word of God and not our circumstances. We call things that are not as though they are until they are. We're not moved by what we see in this world. We're moved by what God's word says. In the book of Joel, he says, let the weak say, I'm strong. Do you have that revelation, praise God, when you're going through something in life, praise God? You say what the word says. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat the fruit of it. So we go through what we think, what we say, and what we do. And God has reminded us as we searched our body counts. I pray that nobody's body count went higher this past week. Because those days of hookups are over. Amen, lights? Amen. Those days of, of, of being conformed to the world. Just because somebody took you to Papa Do's, you don't owe them your body. <laughs> we live in a world today. Y'all, well, well, we got folks in the world Thank if I, if I buy this for you, you owe me some. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> I talked to too many men in the barbershop who oh, let me take her out. <laughs> and you don't need to be with Boaz cousins. You need to wait on Boaz, amen, lights? Because God can fix it the way you can take your own self to your favorite restaurant. Yep. Somebody come to you, pull out your own American Express and say, boom, I can buy anything on this menu. And I don't need nobody to buy nothing for me. But when you follow God's plan, praise God, what God guides, he provides. And God don't want us conforming to this world. Even in today's time, they've got a series that I saw on TV, uh, Girls Gone Wild. <laughs> and people are out there doing some crazy stuff, y'all. And don't let them get alcohol in the body. And I've never seen, y'all, you know, uh, it's been a long time, but how do you get this sloppy drunk? <laughs> you know, and thank you doing something good. And you got to, you know, put away childish things if you want to go to the next level in Christ Jesus. Because God has a plan for your life and, and he wants you to understand that, 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 that everything that he asks us to do is, is for our best benefit. Amen. Now when we were children, we didn't understand that and many of us didn't believe that. But the devil was right there to say, well, you know, you ain't got to wait on God. All you got to do is do what you want to do. And ever since the Garden of Eden, people have been doing what they want to do and not trusting God's plan for their life. 
And that's why God says we have to grow up to be able to present ourselves, present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Somebody say holy again. Holy. And acceptable unto God. Which is our reasonable service. So how can we present our bodies as a living sacrifice? The first thing God wants you to understand you've got to do. Somebody say surrender. Surrender. And that's what happens when you give your life to Christ, praise God. Uh, Jesus says, anyone who comes after me, let them deny themselves. Somebody say, die of self. Take up that cross and follow me. But he also reminded us that there are some amongst us that's not going to ever taste death until they come. Yeah, they can be in church, but they're not going to actually give themselves away. So God can use them. He's basically saying, take my heart and mold it. And I can just testify back in the day, y'all, when, when, when anybody ever gone to God and, and you said you weren't going to do it no more and you find yourself back doing it again? I'm not going to just put it on one either bind. I'm talking about I found myself back in the sheets. There's a whole lot of us found ourselves back in the sheets. And God loved us anyway. But he was trying to get us to surrender our will to his will. And I've told the story, but he wants me to tell it again today. When I was tired, y'all, of going to God after 15 minutes of pleasure, coming to him talking about, God, you know my heart. You ever been there before? <laughs> and he said, that's why I need to create in you a clean heart. And renewing you the right spirit. It's easy to go back uh, 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 with these excuses after we've done what we knew we weren't supposed to do. And what's sad in the world, y'all, we even have the gall, or people have the gall to call God's name when they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. And how much know when you call God's name, you get his attention? It's like, you're going to call me to watch this? Oh, God. And I can remember as clear as yesterday, I'm at this restaurant, y'all, and, 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 and young lady put the iron in fine, put the ice in nice. And in this particular situation, she took off a sandal and put it on the other side of the table where I was. You want me and I want you. And you know exactly what we're going to do when we leave here. And you know, it's like you got two, you got the Lord on one side, and you got the devil on the other side. And as she was slip, slip, sipping on her little drink, you know, the devil part of me saying, one more sip, one more sip, one more sip. <laughs> but the God side of me, and I'm talking about way back in the day, y'all. He was saying, there you go again. You tell me how much you love me. You tell me that you place no other person, place a thing before me. But every time you face the same test, you fail. Anybody ever been there? I do need to turn my back. Y'all not like me. And when she said to me, James, I'm going to go powder my nose. Sister going to powder her nose. She said, order my food and I'll be right back. And as soon as she went to that restroom, who do you think was running like Forrest Gump? <laughs> I didn't want to go through it no more. I, you know, you, you can get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And God can get sick and tired of his children being sick and tired. He loves us and forgives us over and over again. Now, God has forgiven all of us over and over again. But eventually he expects us to grow up and get it right and again I'm so thankful to God that God didn't go on strike because of things he didn't like he looked beyond our faults and he saw our needs but we have to surrender our will to God's will he says anyone who wants to be my disciple again let them deny themselves somebody say die of self and take up the cross. And again, if you read where do you stand, you know the cross is when your will crosses God's will. It happens every day. Something that you want to do, 
something that God wants you to do, and you have to make up your mind to follow the Lord. He says if we resist the enemy, he'll do what? He'll flee from you. But if you fell in the same test over and over again, he calls it a reprobate mind. I just turn you over. Your conscience has gotten seared. You can do wrong so long, you don't even feel wrong when you're doing it. You ever felt that way? Now again, if you walked in this church and somebody said, oh, you got a nail in your foot and you didn't even feel the pain from the nail that you stepped on, who would be ready to go to the hospital? And go to the doctor and say, uh, doctor, I got a nail in my foot and I didn't even feel it. Take this nail out, please. But what's even worse is when we can do things to displease God and we don't even feel bad about it no more. That's when the enemy tries to say, hey, we got you where we want you to be because your conscience has gotten seared. Now, as long as you're feeling bad, there's hope. But when you get to the point to where, hey, if loving this is wrong, I don't want to do right. That's a dangerous place to be in. And after we surrender, praise God. Somebody say, all of God, all of God. and none of me. And when God began the process like he did with myself, praise God, when I was at all of me and none of God, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to get my groove on, praise God. I'm going to have a good time. Uh, 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 God makes a shift when he, he touches our heart and we say, I'm going to come to the Lord just like I am with my heartbreaks, with my habits, with my hangups, uh, and let the potter put me to, together again. And man, you can be doing good for days weeks, months, and like Juanita Bynum said, guess what, I found myself back in the sheets. And that's when you add some of God and some of me. And if you want to go deeper with that, Romans seven twenty four, the Apostle Paul says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of flesh and things that I don't want to do? Somebody say, I still do. How many of us can relate to that journey? You wanted to do right. The spirit was willing, but guess what? The flesh was weak. And somebody give God praise for not giving up on none of us during that time. Oh, you, you are holy now. You're looking all cleaned up now. But if wives could talk, a whole lot of us could understand uh, uh, some of me and some of of God. We wanted to do what was right. But there are certain things that the enemy brings in our life. He knows your weaknesses. And he will bring them right before you to try to see if he can get you back in his game at some of me and some of God. And that's why we have to grow up and learn that there's no temptation that will come upon us that the Lord won't provide a way out. But when he gives you that way out, if you really want to make the process, you've got to run like Forrest Gump. You've got to do your very, very best to say, hey, I want this. Praise God. I'm not saying it's easy, but somebody say it's worth it. It's worth it. Because once you get to all of God and none of me, God is able to use you the way he planned to use you when he created you. And Paul said in Galatians 2.20 about this, he said, I am crucified in Christ. I, somebody say my ego, my ego. It, no lives, it no longer lives, but Christ lives within me. And that's what you got to have, praise God. You got to have more of Jesus. We have to decrease. God has to increase. But if it's too much of me, it's not enough of God. It's not about my will. It's about God's will being done. And we will live in a world, y'all, that's controlled by ego. Somebody say, edging God out. Edging God out. Who I am is what I do. We got some folks that their whole ego is based upon what they do, the job that they got. And, and if they got a better job than you, they think they're on a higher level than you. 
But if your focus is on your ego or, or, or what you do, when you don't have that job no more, what happens? You lose your self-esteem. Who I am is how I look. And the devil sees so many people created in God's own image, fearfully and wonderfully made, looking in the mirror, don't like how they look. Amen. How in the world can you not like how you look when God created you in his own image? You are somebody, praise God. There is not another person on this earth, even if you got an a, a identical twin that's identical with you. Look at your thumbprint and your handprint. Even twins have different thumbprints and handprints. Amen. And God wants you to know how special you are. And the world will start getting you to the point to where, well, you know, you're okay and, 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 and this and that, but uh, uh, you don't have this and you don't have that, getting you to focus on what you don't have instead of what you do have. And when you know who you are and whose you are, as Eleanor Roosevelt says, nobody can ever make you feel inferior because you don't give them the permission. Anybody know that you are somebody special in God's sake? Amen. That God don't make no extra and he don't make no junk. And you don't have to go and get enough hair for the Lion King to say, wow, that's a lot of hair. For you to know how blessed you are. You are blessed with the hair or without the hair. God don't have no problem with you looking good. But don't get to the point to where you think your self-esteem is based upon external things and not internal things. Because when God says you're good looking, it ain't got nothing to do with the outside. And nobody get offended because you chose to do some things. God wants you to feel good about yourself. It's about the inside. But with the devil, it'll start with a toehold. And before long, it'll become a stronghold. And he'll go on and on and on and on trying to please people in the world. Amen. Instead of your focus on pleasing God. That's what's important, praise God, that you can know how valuable you are to God. He spared not his own son's life to save your life. So you know that you are special in God's sight. So we go to the point to where we are crucified in Christ. Who I am is not how you look. Who I am is not what you do. Who I am is not how much money you got. If you focus on money, praise God, you'll never have enough. And the problem with that thing is when you got money, you feel good. But when you don't have money, you feel sad. And your father owned the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills. The cattle are on. You are a child of God. And when you take care of his business, he has promised to take care of your business. Because his word works when you work it. And then the next principle, somebody say resist the enemy. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves to God and resist the enemy and he will flee from you. And that's what God was teaching me. Son, you've got to be willing to resist his short-term gain that's coming with a lot of long-term pain. And when God's getting ready to promote you and take you to another level, he always comes back with these same little old tricks, you know, that he can get us with. The same tricks. I know how you like them, James. <laughs> So I'm going to bring somebody that's going to put the iron in fire. And you're going to like this. But if you really want to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, you've got to be willing to resist his short-term gain. It started all the way back in the garden, y'all, when Eve didn't resist the short-term gain. God had already put him in a perfect paradise like he has planned for all of us today. A life more abundantly, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, in our family, in our career, in our relationships. But the, the enemy offered her a, a shortcut. God said, I have one tree I don't want you to eat from. The knowledge of good and evil. And if you understand the revelation, the reason that God had one tree that he didn't want him to eat, he wasn't trying to hold nothing back. God wants us to love, trust, and obey him, not because we have no choice. He wants us to love, trust, and obey him. Why? Because he is our choice. 
He could have made them a robot where they had to obey him. He could have made them animals who have limited choices, but he created Adam and Eve in their, his own image on a level higher than everything else. So it had to be a free will. But here comes the devil with a short-term gain. Oh, God just knows if you eat this, you're going to be just as wise as him. Gave her a way to get something that she wanted. She's looking at the tree. Oh, man, it sure was good to the eyes. You know, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. It was good to make her wise and the pride of life. You're going to be just as wise as God. And then when she ate it, the eyes were open. The Bible says, number one, they were naked and ashamed. And we got folks today nowadays that... Uh, uh, get ashamed when they get naked. God made you beautiful. But again, I say this in love. The devil came with short-term gain. Didn't tell him about the long-term pain. But what are some of the things he didn't tell him? The devil didn't say nothing about, you know, once you eat this, y'all going to be kicked out of the garden to eat. The devil didn't say nothing about once you eat this, y'all not going to have immortality and live forever. The devil didn't say nothing about, hey, man, once you eat this, guess what? Your own Cain, son Cain go kill his brother Abel. The devil didn't say nothing about, man, once you eat this, everybody after you're going to be born in sin, and they're going to be struggling with sin because of what you did, and many of them are going to be blaming you for having to deal with all of these sins. He always comes with a shortcut. And until you grow up and realize that there ain't no good devils out there, all he wants to do is to steal God's will, to kill your zeal, and destroy your joy. Amen. When Amen. Jesus said, man, I came for my children. I came for my disciples to have life and have it more abundantly. So we have to resist the enemy. That short-term gain. And then... The next principle to present yourself as a living sacrifice, somebody say, in Christ. In Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 reminds you and I that if any man or any woman be in Christ, we are what? Yeah. New creations. The former things are passed away, but you've got to behold it that all things have become new. Anybody got a new walk in here? You're walking by faith and not by sight. A new talk. You made up your mind. I don't care what the world does. I'm going to speak the word and not my circumstances. I'm going to call things that are not as though they are until they are because the word works. When we work it, God's not a man that can lie. He's not a man that can fail. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but he can't be pleased without your faith. In Numbers 23, it says, has he not said and done or will he not say and do? He's not a son of man that he has to repent for one thing that he said. Somebody say God's will. God's it's God's will. will. It's God's will. And you don't have to know how he's going to do it. Just know who's going to do it. But to win it, you've got to get in it. God don't like lukewarm. He says in Revelations, I want you to be hot. But if you're not going to be hot, as I paraphrase this part, don't waste your time. Because if you're going to be lukewarm, I'll do what? And this is God saying, man, to win it, you got to get in it. You got to get on fire. Praise God. You can't try it one day and then let the devil come and steal, kill, and destroy what you've already put in there. You've got to stick with it and stay with it until the victory comes. And God wants you to know that it's worth it. Forget it's not easy. It's worth it to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual form of worship. He tells us that. It simply means we have to First, God. I'm going through an acronym on sacrifice. Exodus 23, 20 and 3, the first commandment is to place no other God where? Before him. Before him. 
We know how God is a jealous God. He has a right to be jealous. He gave his son's life to save your life. And after somebody give their life to save your life, praise God, you're going to say, well, forget that. I didn't tell you to do it. I'm just going to go out here and live the way I want to. Oh, I'm reminded of the story of the lady who needed a kidney, y'all. And they tried all the other family members and didn't have a match. And finally they got to the baby's sister and they examined her and they had a match. And Oprah brought her on a program and interviewed her and said, how did you feel about that? She said, I was praying that our family had a match because I truly love my sister. But I'm going to be honest, Oprah. I was praying that I wasn't a match. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to understand that. Yeah. I was praying that I wasn't a match. Yeah. But when I found out that I was a match, I was thankful that God gave me the faith to give a part of my body to save my sister's life. But when you think about what Jesus did, child, Jesus didn't just give no kidney to save your life. He didn't give no liver to save your life. Jesus gave his whole life yes. Yes. to save our life. Amen. And that should make us want to be obedient and present our bodies as a living sacrifice to him. Somebody say holy, holy. and acceptable unto, God, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's all it's saying in the word. That should be an easy thing to do when you understand it was love that held his hands on the cross, not nails. And it wasn't no alarm clock that woke you up this morning. How many know it was a touch of God's hands? And we need to let him know how much we appreciate it. And then we go to continuous improvement. I'm going to Philippians uh, 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 3 and 12. And even those of us who have been with Christ a long time, Paul, who wrote so much of the New Testament, says, not as though I've already attained it or I'm already perfect, but I'm doing what? I'm pressing towards the mark, the high calling of Jesus Christ. God takes us from glory to glory. He takes us from not enough through just enough to more than enough. And the biggest room will always be for improvement. We don't get to a point to say, you know, I've, I've been to Bible study for a year, so I got it all. <laughs> no, baby, you're just getting started. You're just getting started because the answers to your problem was in that lesson. But if you're standing home trying to keep up with the Kardashians, you'll never get there. None of these folks on television died for your sins. And God don't want you missing out. And then lastly, somebody say eternal life. eternal life. If you want to present your body as a living sacrifice, John 17, 3, this is eternal life. You have the privilege of getting to know the Father and getting to know the Son, and he's given you the Holy Spirit to be your greatest teacher. Now, you've heard me teach before, y'all. We come to church to be taught. But your greatest revelations are going to be caught in your private time studying the word with the Holy Spirit. And we know the devil will try to do anything that he can to stop you from studying the word of God. When we were children, we talked about it earlier today. We could, we could watch a football game from 12 to 3, 3 to 6, and 7 to 10 without getting sleepy. But when you first got into the word of God, how many of us got sleepy in 10 minutes? Some of us five minutes. Thought we were doing good with 15 minutes. And God is challenging you, baby. That's why the devil be working so hard for you not to get into the word. Because he knows when you get hooked on the book and make up your mind to go all the way with the Lord. There is nothing in this world that he can do that can stop you from living the life that Jesus came for you to live. If you can receive it, give God praise. As we talked about today, y'all, we belong to the Lord. Our life is not our own. To you, I belong. 
I give myself away to you. Take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice. All my dreams, all my plans, Lord, I lay them in your hands. I give myself away to you.